Right, welcome to our 2022 Wildwood Platinum 179 DBKX. We're gonna start right in the back bumper here. So you just kind of reach in, pull that cap out of there inside of that back bumper. You're gonna find your sewer hose here. So just take note of those two ears right there. That's all be hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. We're just keeping it stored in the back bumper here, just help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things that little bit fresher for you. And that cap just presses in place. Up in the back corner here, you're gonna find a cable and satellite inlet. It's so just a coax cable is gonna plug into there. It'll fire up at your TV location. Straight down from there, we've got your stabilizer jack here. So what that's gonna do, is just gonna run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up and that'll just get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you see you got in the unit right now. Just keep things firm while you're out camping. Right above those, you're gonna find your low point drains. So just those caps are gonna unthread from there and drain the water system out. The purpose of that would be if you're leaving the trailer for a while, you don't want your water going stale or stagnant. You can just drain it all out before you leave. Or for winterizing, you just wanna get that water all out before you go pumping the antifreeze through. Right ahead from there, we've got your sewer system itself. So that cap there, you're just gonna kind of press it in. You can pull it out and then you see it's got the exact same ears that your sewer hose had. So you've been attaching that the same way. Just press it in, give it that turn, clicks in, and there you have it. On the left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black valve. That black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet. So that's of course gonna be your dirtiest water. So we'll be dumping that first. Once that's done, you come down to the gray. Gray tank is filled from your sinks as well as your showers. So typically cleaner water. We'll dump that last just to help keep that hose as clean as possible. Up here, you've also got a black tank flush. So you may notice over time, you, after you've gone and dumped that black tank, you know for a fact that it's empty, but your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically, that's some debris inside of your tank just hanging between the probes, hang, causing that misread. So what you're gonna do is just take your water hose and stick it into there, open up that black valve, turn on the water, and that'll just flush out that tank, get rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue. And from there, you just get this little port there. So as you pop that open, you'll notice there's a little notch in that bottom corner here. It's gonna line up with that notch there. You're just gonna press those in, give it a little eighth turn, locks it into place, and you get the threaded collar there to really lock it down. Following the cord back to the end, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp bend there. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. You're just gonna get that little blue light there, letting you know you've got good clean power. If that red light were to come on, you just wanna make sure that you have someone check out the campsite power, make sure that's all good. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge in your batteries or run your fridge, you've got the power to do so. Right up top here, we've got your fresh water connection. So you're just gonna unscrew that cap. Your water hose will stick into there, turn on the water and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. Right below there is your city water connection. It's the same water hose that just plug into there, turn on the water and it'll pressurize the lines throughout the units. Your fresh water tank drain is just this cap right here. You'll find that little threaded connection right there. So you're just gonna thread that onto there, closes off the tank. And then of course, un unscrewing it allows the tank to drain itself out. Hot water tank here. So you're just gonna line up that keyway. You can pop it on open. Before you ever turn it on with your controls, which are just inside of the unit, we just wanna hit this relief valve right there. Make sure that shot of water comes out. A little bit of water coming out there is just letting you know this tank is full. It's safe to fire it up and you're not gonna burn anything out by doing so. Once we get inside and do turn it on, I'll go over a reset procedure and the button that I'll refer to is just right here. Closing that up, we're just locking it back down with the keyway. And there you have it. Ahead from there, you've got the exhaust for your furnace. So if you're ever running your furnace, you just make sure that's not blocked off. It does get hot. Straight up from there is the exhaust, sorry, the uh, kind of vent here for your stove. So of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it. So you just wanna make sure this vent here is opened up, allowing those fumes to be evacuated out. When you're going traveling, you just gonna kind of press it back into place and you can hear it click. And that's it locked back down. One end of your storage compartment here. So you pop that open, you just get the magnetic latches to hold it open. It does just see straight through to the other side. Around front of the unit. See that little white box up in the frame there? That's your battery disconnect. So with that up, that is currently it on. You either turn it out and pull it right out of there. That's your battery disconnected from the system. The battery itself is, sized, is housed inside of this box right here. So as long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pins, your tow vehicle, that battery's charging for you. Standard barbecue style propane tank here. You're just turning that knob to open it up. Around the other side of the unit here, we've got a solar plug-in on the side there. So just a two prong plug will plug into there, charges your batteries. Other end of your storage compartment. So inside of here, you're gonna find a water hose as well as that park adapter I was telling you about. So your 30 amp cord into there, 15 amp to a standard household outlet. And then just a little jack up here is for running all of your stabilizers. Oh, midway down the trail, you've got a GFI to take the outlet here. And then right in the back, kind of get an exterior kitchen. So again, just the magnetic latch holds it open. Get a 120 volt fridge on the side here. So as long as you're plugged in, this fridge is going for you. Up on the wall there, you got a couple of outlets as well as a couple of USB outlets. A 
bit of drawer space here and then just kind of the open storage there and around back of the unit we do have an exterior shower back here so you're going to get a key just like this guy here just stick it on into there open her up then you got three foot hose hot and cold water standard head so if the dog's out getting muddy you can spray him off where he goes inside tucking it back away and locking it back down Spare tire, of course, and then straight up from there, you're gonna find a pre-wired mount for an observation camera. So if you're looking to have one of those installed, it'll be going right there. Now we'll just make our way inside of the unit. Your assist handle here is just gonna pop up 90 degrees, falls into place. Your door is just on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits wherever you leave it. Real quickly, I'll just point out, your awning arm will contact your door if you've got it wide open. So if you're ever running your awning, you just wanna make sure you're about 90 degrees or so. For your step, you're just gonna grab this guy here, pull it straight up, flip that bottom step over, and then we can make our way inside. So first things first, once you get in here, your fire extinguisher is right on your right, right on the back side here. You got your light switches here. So that light switch on the right does your awning light outside. The light switch on your left does the one above your dinette. The rest of the lights throughout the unit are just on their own center push buttons there. The switch in the bottom corner is for your awning, so press and hold the bottom of that and it makes it, oh, sorry, the top of that and it makes its way out. Again, watch your door. So once that awning is fully extended, we're going to see a little white flap at the end come down as well as a black and metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to want to stop. If you were to continue extending, it will actually wind itself up backwards, in which case our fabric will be underneath our tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So there's our white flap. There's our black tube, so we'll stop right there. Now, if it were to start raining, it's of course gonna hold some water anyway. So what you're gonna do is grab either arm, front or rear, and just pull down on it. And you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. I feel like that angle better because it does give you more shade. You can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just wanna make sure these back arms are back out straight and fully extended, just that we're not running the risk of bending anything. So then we're going to press and hold the bottom of that switch and the awning will make its way back in. Again, we're just watching to make sure that our fabric is over top of the tube. And one more thing to keep in mind with your awning is once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in just because it does catch that wind and you do run the risk of bending your arms. So once that awning is fully closed, the electric motors will just lock into place and hold that awning in place. There we go. So straight above that switch on the right here, this red one, we've got that water heater switch. So we turn that on, that'll turn on your water heater. If that little check light up there were to come on, it's just letting you know that water heater hasn't fired up. So at that point, you just go out and hit that reset button that we'd shown you. Right beside that, we've got your water pump switch. So you turn that on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank, pressurize your lines. Up from there, you've got your monitor system. So on the left, you get battery. So you can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Fresh tank, as you fill that up, we'll go to a third, two thirds and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. So around front here, to kind of your uh, bedding area. You got closet space on the side, as well as a little bit of storage up top. On the wall there, you can see our pre-wired for solar. You also got a USB charging and a power outlet there. So for the couch here, you're basically just taking your back cushions and throwing them off to the side. Travel latch in the top right here, just gonna slide that up, fold this on down, and then the bed will come down with it. And there's your bedding area. Emergency exit over here. So you're just pulling that red tab to get rid of the screen, taking this handle here, throwing it outside, hopping on out. Blinds throughout the unit, pretty well just sit where you leave them. Tucking this guy back away, you're just gonna lift it up, push it into place. Get that towel lash back in there. And then your cushions just sit back into place. Over on this side here, you do have a TV backer in the wall. Straight up from there, you're gonna find your antenna outlet in the center here. Turning that antenna on, you just get that little button right there, turns on that green light, just letting you know it's on. And then behind that, you've got your cable and satellite inlet. Unit is also pre-wired for Wi-Fi, and then of course, power outlet for it there. Above my head, we've got a smoke detector. There we go. USB charging as well as a power outlet. This little black box here is your LP detector. So as long as, so, sorry. L propane is heavier than air, it'll sit on the floor. This guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. 
into the kitchen you do get the one little light there again just to say our push button microwave up top here i will look into that right away basically just your household microwave though down below that we've got your range vent so we've got light in the left there fan on the right so of course this is the fan that you want turned on with that vent outside opened up so we're evacuating our fumes for the stove it's just got the bifold cover that flips on back we're going to turn on the knobs then you can turn over the light while you press and hold and you see it fires right up now the reason we're turning on that light is because that what that's what activates your or sends power to your igniter so you can see with that turned off you just don't have any igniter if it turned on it fires right up now the first time you use your propane system it will take a minute just to clear all the air to the propane lines just before everything fires up it's perfectly normal a little bit of storage down from there below that is just the outlet for your furnace here the real nice thing about this furnace is you can physically see once it fires up there's a little sight glass in the bottom left corner there so behind me right up on the wall here you got the control for your furnace it's basically just a thermostat there so with that slider all the way over to the left that's it turned off with it all the way over to the right that's it turned on anywhere in the middle is going to be your temp selection so that fan will just run for a couple of seconds and then we'll hear the click of the igniter and then we should be able to see the little blue glow of the flame So do keep in mind with this furnace, it is just dumping all of its air right here. So if you're looking to move the air throughout, you're going to want to get yourself a fan or something just to move the air around. Temperature readout right in the bottom there, just to let you know what you're currently at. And then if you take that slider all the way over to the left until you hear it click, that's it turned off. USB charging beside it, a bit of storage up top here. And then again, just the blind here. With this window, I just want to say real quick, it does have just this little sliding latch right there. You want to slam that window shut make sure that latch sits in properly and isn't just pushing on the window frame a little bit of storage above your sink inside of here you're also going to find a little bluetooth speaker so because you don't have a dedicated stereo they do provide you with a little bluetooth speaker super simple You've got your owner's manual in there with it above the sink you get a little light here power outlet in the back hot and cold water of course and removable covers are made of the same material as your countertop some storage down below being mindful of course of our drains and our water lines if you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time you've got access to your water pump right behind here there's just one screw in the center down in the bottom same sort of panel right here gives you access to the water tank okay and then 12 volt fridge here so as long as your battery is charged or charging this guy's going for you it's a good thing i didn't forget that there's a freezer up top fridge down below temp selections right across the top there down below your fridge you're going to find your converter so if we just press the top and center she pops on open you get all of your breakers on the left side here whenever a breaker breaks it's going to sit in the middle so just turn it off and then back on and then on the right side we get all of your fuses in the bedding area or your bunkhouse here you just got the little kind of light up top center, center push button down below is identical and then the little dog house storage down below and then into the bathroom here so again just the center push button lights in the back corner you get a roof in here you're just turning that knob to open it up in the back you get the little button there it turns on the fan in your shower you just get the standard head and hose hot and cold water of course and the curtain the toilet here just opens on up flushers on the right side gfr protected outlet here so test on the left reset in the center so if you ever have outlets that don't work that's the first thing you should check hot and cold water of course again some more storage down below and then inside of your medicine cabinets and then lastly inside of these unit is your air conditioner here so this temperature selection knob is pretty well redundant i mean you've got a dedicated furnace so you're just going to be leaving this on cold this knob up front gives you your control between low fan and then low fan again and then high fan so that's just moving air no cooling involved once you get into low cool, that's your low fan with cooling. So at that point, your compressor's kicking in and out. The high cool is, of course, just the high fan with cooling. The two different options that you have with your air conditioner are basically just the two louvers on either end here. So you just open them and close them. Just choose them where you want and, you know, the majority of your airflow. And then really, that is about it for this little guy. So if you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call. 204-237-7272.